Welcome to our channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and definitely check out our other 21 Day Fix videos on the fitness food playlist. So happy Thanksgiving, first of all. And I am like super pregnant right now. I'm due next week. So I'm trying to get this video in before I have my first child, which I'm super excited about. Um, but I've been working on some ideas for this video for a while, so I really wanted to make sure I got this out there. And then also like with pregnancy, I have had gestational diabetes, which is something that's caused by um, like a hormone that the placenta um, produces. So for me, it's also been more important to have healthy options to be able to eat. So I wanna make sure that you guys have healthy options, not only with the holiday season, but for other health medical issues as well. So if you're new to 21 Day Fix, no worries. If you're not new, you can totally skip this part. But basically for 21 Day Fix, when you sign up, they put you into like different meal plan like categories um, based on like what calorie level you're meant to have. And so for me, I usually do the meal plan A. So that's the one that I'll be discussing today. And basically with 21 Day Fix, they have like certain containers, which are different sizes. And each container is for certain types of food that you're allowed to have. So like the green container, this is a cup size and this is for vegetables. And so for my meal plan, I can have three cups of vegetables per day for the vegetables that go in that category. Um, and so there are lists that you can find online for different items that are included with each of the categories. So for instance, you'd think, okay, corn, vegetable, but it's not something that goes in that container that will go under like the carb container. So for fruits, this is also a cup size. And for this one, we get two per day with this meal plan. For proteins, this is three fourths of a cup and we get four of them. So that adds up to three cups of protein. Carbs, this is half a cup size and we get two of them. So one cup of those carbs per day. Healthy fats is one third of a cup. And so that's what we get for that per day. For seasoned dressings, two tablespoons. And then for oils and things like peanut butter, one teaspoon. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'll be showing you some of the recipes that someone with the meal plan A can have for the day for Thanksgiving. So you could either um, space out these things during the day or you could kind of have it in like a one sitting type of thing like you would with Thanksgiving. So however you wanna do it, there's a certain amount that you can have per day and then eat it as you wish. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. If you're starting with a frozen turkey like I am, make sure to allow for ample time for the turkey to defrost ahead of time. So now that the turkey is defrosted, I need to open it up. I need to take out the giblets and the neck from the inside of the turkey. Then I need to rinse it all off. And then I'm going to pat it dry with a paper towel. All right, so now that I'm done with that part, I preheated the oven to 325. And usually I will be using like a lot of butter and salt, but you can't really do that with 21 Day Fix. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be using coconut oil. So there was that one teaspoon that we have left that was meant for like things like peanut butter type of thing, and we can actually use coconut oil. So I took one teaspoon of coconut oil and I placed it in the microwave for 30 seconds to melt it. And then we're going to be using some poultry seasoning. So I'm going to be using one teaspoon of poultry seasoning that I'll be adding to this. And the good thing about this is it has no salt in it. You can actually, any type of seasonings that don't have salt, you can pretty much use. So whatever seasoning that you like, you can go ahead and put on the turkey, in the turkey. The other thing is that you can put, like within a turkey, you can put onion, celery, carrots. Um, you just can't for like this particular day, 
if you want to save them like for tomorrow you could have them if you want to but um, usually when I put them inside I just kind of like put them in for taste and then I just take them out and they're not really meant for like eating type of thing I don't usually use like an inside stuffing um, that's meant for like eating um, but you can kind of put any of those things in for flavor if you're not eating them because we already have like our vegetables allocated for the day um, but as far as flavoring that's no problem as long as it doesn't include like salt or butter those types of things you can put them in there put some lemon in there whatever you like to do you can totally put that within there um, and then we're going to mix this up And then we're going to put this over the bird. So right now I have the bird breast side up. So usually what I'll do is part of the time I'll have it where it's face down so some of the juices can kind of like leak into the breast area. Um, but whatever you prefer, make sure you cook according to the packaging. Um, for this one, I'm going to be adding one cup of water to the bottom. And then I'm going to be having this in the oven uncovered but if it starts to get too brown then I'll be adding tin foil to it and then about every 30 minutes or so I'm going to try to take some of the juices that come from the turkey itself and mix the water and then just kind of like use that to kind of like add onto the turkey so we're going to go ahead and place that in the oven now Definitely make sure to check with the packaging what temperature it should be at at the end. I have a meat thermometer that I'll be using to stick inside the turkey just to make sure that in the inside is uh, fully cooked. Don't want anyone getting sick or anything like that. For vegetables, we have three cups that were allowed on plant A for the day. So for vegetables, we'll be doing butternut squash and also string beans. And the thing about 21 day fix that I've read is that you're supposed to measure as, um, like prepared as you're going to eat it. So if I were to eat raw string beans, then I would measure them raw. If I'm going to eat them cooked, then I measure them cooked. So I'm going to prepare and cook these and then measure them afterwards. So these green beans are already washed and I'm going to be cooking them in this container. So I'm going to have the oven set to 350. I'm going to spray this down with the zero calorie butter, butter flavoring. Then I'm going to spray the string beans with the butter flavoring. So they're buttery. And then garlic powder, not got for like salt, but garlic powder is a free thing that you can use. So I'm going to put a little bit of garlic powder on the string beans. Now we place in the oven. Then next for the butternut squash, I'll be placing them on a pan. So I'm going to spray that with the butter flavoring. And then you can just get the full butternut squash and then chop it up yourself or you can get it pre-cut. So that's what I did this time to make it a little bit faster. Okay. 
And then I'll be spraying this with the butter flavoring. And then sticking that in the oven as well. And then both of these I'll be cooking until they're about fork tender. So we are allowed one cup of carbs, as I was saying before, and we're going to have half a cup be towards corn that we're going to steam in the microwave. You can also do it over the stove, but I like to have it be simple if it's something that turns out right when it's done simply. So I'm just going to steam it in the microwave and have that ready in the oven. The other half cup is going to be going towards some mashed cinnamon sweet potatoes. So for one potato, for one potato, if you do not have the potato option on your microwave, usually about six minutes and 30 seconds does it for me. So I usually poke some holes in it and then just place it in the microwave and I'll show you the next steps. Once your sweet potato is done for the microwave, maybe give it like a second to cool so you can actually handle it. And then we're going to take half a cup of a sweet potato. We're going to add it to a bowl. Okay. Then there's some free ingredients. So this is a zero calorie butter flavoring and I'm going to spray it down. Then we're going to take one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. Then we're going to take one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you can play around with this a little bit. So if you wanna add more cinnamon or add more vanilla, just be careful with adding too much of it because then you don't wanna have too much of the flavoring. And then you can add, you can use like a potato masher or just use like a fork to kind of just mash it up. And this is really tasty. Next, we're going to be making some cranberry sauce and this is going to be taking care of one of our fruit containers. So we're going to be needing a pan for this one. We're going to be adding one fourth cup of water. Then we're going to be using stevia. So this has zero calories and low glycemic index. And so this does not count as any of the items. And we're going to be taking three tablespoons of this. two tablespoons of freshly squeezed orange juice and this is going to count towards part of the fruit container and so if you have like a juicer or I'll be using this hand juicer however you can get the juice out
there. All right, so there is one fake spoon. Let's get one more. Then for the cranberries, I'm using fresh cranberries, which I need to rinse off. And then I'll be using one cup of cranberries minus the two tablespoons that I use for the orange juice. Next, I'm going to be heating up what I added so far to melt the stevia. It usually takes about like a minute. I'm just going to heat it on medium heat. Now that the stevia is melted, I'm going to add the cranberries and then bring it to a boil. So I'm just gonna put that on high. All right, so it's starting to boil. And then as this is happening, you may notice that some of the cranberries are going to start breaking open. And that's exactly what we want them to do. All right, so most of them have cracked open and I'm going to turn off the heat. Adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Stir that up. And then I usually let this cool a little bit and then place it in the fridge to um to chill until it's ready to be served turkey's done in place of one of the protein containers we can do a scoop of protein so i'm using this green beret vanilla protein you can use whatever protein that you want it doesn't have to be the brand or anything it's just what we have and i really like um this, the taste of this one so we're going to be taking one scoop and you can have this before your meal with your meal after whatever you want and then we're going to be taking one fourth teaspoon of apple pie spice, which is a free one that you can use. Then we have the option of two tablespoons of seeds and dressings. So we are going to be using, it's actually calorie free, but it does have some sodium. So this dressing is a caramel syrup dressing. 
And we're going to be using two tablespoons of that. And this is going to be done with water. So I like it better with milk or almond milk, but this is what we have as an option for today. Then I'm just going to mix that up. You can also put this in a shaker bottle, probably a lot better with that. And that's your caramel fall flavored protein drink. One of my favorite parts of Thanksgiving is pumpkin pie. And luckily Trader Joe's makes this pumpkin spice hummus that to me tastes so much like pumpkin pie. And we are able to have one third cup of hummus so we're able to have one third cup of this so we can add this as a dessert or i mean for me i love it so much i'm always obsessed with it in the fall that i'll even eat it for breakfast i just think it's so delicious so i'm going to take one third of this and if you want to get fancy you can put it in like a little fancy glass A great chi with this would be a, just a little bit of whipped cream, but otherwise this is what we get and it is absolutely delicious. So you can just grab a spoon and voila. So that's your little pumpkin pie dessert. And we have also another one. Next, we're going to move on to our second dessert. And this one is going to help us utilize one container of fruit and then also one of our protein containers. So we're going to start by dicing up three apples. And I know that sounds strange. Um, we're actually, the apples, since they kind of shrink, we're going to be measuring them afterwards. So, um, you know, just depending on how big of a size of apples you have, we're gonna cook them up and then we're going to be taking one cup of that afterwards. So I'm gonna start and dice them up now. Okay, now that I have them all chopped up, we're going to be adding two teaspoons of lemon juice, one eighth teaspoon of nutmeg, and then a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. And then we're going to be cooking on medium until they're all softened, which will probably take about 15 minutes. And just make sure that everything's stirred up. For the next protein container, we're actually going to be using ricotta because you can use ricotta cheese for one of your protein containers. And so after we use this container, um, this is going to be about three fourths of a cup we'll be using. And then we'll have about a cup and a half left that you can devote towards your turkey. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this out. All right, so 
So we've got our three fourths of a cup of ricotta and I'm going to add that to this dish. And we're going to add one fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla. And one teaspoon of stevia. And then we're just going to mix this up. The other option, because basically once the apples are done, we're going to be adding that on top of this and mixing this. Um, but if you prefer, you can use like plain Greek yogurt, plain yogurt, and then add in stevia and vanilla to kind of make it like a vanilla type of yogurt and then add the apples to it. I liked having it like this. Uh, the best way to have with apples is whipped cream. Of course, you can't do that. Um, the other thing is that there are a couple different options of how you can serve this. So you could have it where the apples, you chill them first, and then these are both chilled together. You could have it where this is cold and then the apples are hot and you just place them on top. You could have it where you warm this up and so that way they're both warmed up together. Um, so I don't know, I've had it kind of like each way and I'm not sure which way is my favorite but you can go ahead and try for yourself. So once those are all heated up and softened, then I'll just be adding those in. All right, so now that the apples are ready, we're going to take one cup of that mixture and then add it here. And again, there are different options that you have as far as whether you wanna have hot and cold, hot and hot, cold and cold, however you wanna do it. And so that is your other dessert. I like to kind of like mix it up, but again, however you want to do it. And if you prefer, you can have like more turkey than ricotta. You can have more ricotta and then less turkey. However you want to do it is fine. Um, and then the turkey is just, again, the turkey was the other one and a half that was left over. And so that was um, everything for the day. And voila, so this is the finished product. This is everything you can have for the day for Thanksgiving. So this gives you two gigantic plates of food. So you could do like one for lunch, one for dinner if you want. You get your protein shaken, and then you have two incredible desserts. And this included the cup and a half between the two plates of the turkey, we have a cup on each plate of the butternut squash, we have uh, one cup total of the string beans, and then we have see one cup of the cranberries with the orange juice, we've got the one cup of the fruit for dessert, we've got the half a cup of corn and half a cup of sweet potatoes. So we got all our protein in, all of our things, and yeah. So if you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.